Hi and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. In the world of internet shopping and comparison websites, it seems that price is everything in persuading a customer to purchase. However, although this is often the case, many businesses have turned their back on competing over price and instead have focused on creating superior products in the belief that quality is remembered long after price is forgotten. So with that point made, let's turn to today's presentation on quality. Okay, so what are we going to learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out what a quality product is. Then we're going on to investigate the methods used to ensure quality. And then finally, we'll explore the costs and benefits of ensuring quality. Okay, let's get started by asking, what is a quality product? A quality product is an item that has met a certain standard and is seen as being better than compatible products and by customers. For example, a handmade tailored suit is seen as being of better quality than a mass produced one purchased from a retail shop because it will fit better, will use better material and will be styled more fashionably. What this demonstrates therefore is that quality is a concept that is based on a number of factors which when pulled together result in a superior product. For example, a product which has lots of features, is reliable, has excellent build quality and is well designed will be seen as being of a high quality, especially if similar products do not offer as much. Ok, let's now turn to look at the methods a business can use to ensure quality by first asking, what is quality control? Quality control describes a system where quality is checked at the beginning and end of the productive process. How it works is that before raw materials and components are used in production, a business will assess them against a certain standard. If they meet this standard, the materials are accepted and used in production. However, if they do not, they will be rejected and returned to the supplier. And similarly, at the end of the productive process, a second quality check takes place, where the finished product will be judged against another standard. If it passes this, the item can be released for sale. But if it fails, the product will either have to be reworked until it meets the standard, or, if that is not possible, thrown away as scrap. Now, as can be seen, such a quality system is incredibly simple and easy to implement across a factory, as it only involves two quality checks at the beginning and end of the productive process. Moreover, and because there are only two points of inspection, it also means that quality control is a very cheap system to implement, as only a small amount of staff time is spent on checking quality. However, although it is a simple and cheap system to use, it does not mean it is not effective. In that, as only raw materials that meet a certain standard are used, it means it is more likely that the finished product will also be good. Further still, even if issues occur during production, this system will identify errors with a product before it is released for sale, meaning customers won't become dissatisfied by badly made products. However, because errors in production are only identified at the end, it can mean that high levels of waste occur with such a system, especially if the problem happened at the beginning of the manufacturing process and a large number of products have already passed through that stage. In fact, if as a result lots of finished products have to be reworked to bring them up to standard, or worse still, have to be scrapped, such a system can end up being very costly. This is especially the case if the production line needs to be shut down until the location of the problem is identified and corrected, which of course would also affect output levels. And similarly, if the raw materials delivered by a supplier are not up to standard, this could also cause production to be halted or at least slowed until new components arrive. Ok, let's move on to look at another system used to ensure quality by asking what is quality assurance? Quality assurance is a system which not only checks quality at the beginning and end of the productive process, but also at different points throughout it as well. How it works is that, as with quality control, raw materials are checked at the beginning of the production line 
and the finished product at the end to ensure quality standards are being met. However, in addition to that and at key stages during the manufacturing process, further quality checks take place to make sure that the partly finished product is not developing any faults that would cause it to be rejected once completed. Given this, and as you have probably already realised, a big advantage of a quality assurance system is that it attempts to reduce the high levels of waste that can result with a quality control system. In that, by checking quality throughout the productive process, errors will be identified quickly, meaning fewer items will have to be reworked or scrapped. Further still, because regular checking will make it easier to pinpoint errors to particular points on the production line, less time will be needed to solve any problems, meaning if manufacturing needs to be shut down, it will only be for a short period of time compared to quality control. In fact, due to all of this, it should mean that the final product that rolls off the production line is of a good standard and meets customers' expectations. And finally, when this is coupled with the idea that quality assurance is a fairly simple system to implement across a business, and it can be seen why many organisations use it. Nevertheless, although the benefits are significant, it does need to be remembered that putting in place more quality checks will add to costs. In that, standards will have to be developed for each stage being quality checked, and extra staff time will have to be spent inspecting items. Moreover, when this is then coupled with the problem that introducing more points of inspection may slow down the production line and hence reduce output, it can be seen that quality assurance is by no means perfect. Ok, let's now turn to look at our final method by asking, what are quality inputs? Quality inputs refers to the resources that are used to make a product. For example, the raw materials and components used in the productive process are a key element in creating a high quality product. In so much that using good raw materials means fewer problems are likely to occur during production, such as tears, breakages and faults, due to poor components being used. But also, the final product is likely to be better, as good quality in usually results in good quality out, meaning customers will be more satisfied with what they purchase. Having said that, the cost of good quality raw materials will be expensive, meaning a business may have to increase its prices, which could negatively affect sales. Another input which can influence quality is staff and how good they are. For example, if a business recruits excellent people who they train to a high level, it is likely they will carry out their work to a higher standard, meaning a better product will be completed. In fact, although training staff is expensive, it will probably pay for itself in the long term, as employees will make fewer errors and waste levels will be reduced. Better yet, when this is then combined with the point that trained staff are more adaptable and hence better able to provide personalised products, and it can be seen why they play a big role in enhancing quality. A third input which can also lead to quality improvements is the use of the best, most up-to-date machinery in the productive process. This can be really beneficial because using high quality equipment means it is less likely errors and faults will occur during production, which reduces waste, but also that the completed product will be of a higher standard because the machinery will make a more consistent item. Better yet, if this is then combined with regular maintenance checks of the machinery, and it can be seen why it may be possible to manufacture an error-free product quickly and productively. However, as before, purchasing the best machinery, maintaining it and training staff to use it is expensive, which may mean a business will have to increase its prices. Moreover, if the customers a business is targeting are price sensitive, this could cause a big problem as sales could fall dramatically if they switch to cheaper competitors. And lastly, a final input which can also help quality is the packaging used by a business. 
This is because if the packaging used is strong, it will protect the product, meaning it is less likely to get damaged. But also, if it is stylish, it will help create an image around the product of superior quality, which will attract customers. However, a business does need to be careful with this input, as a number of customers are put off by excessive packaging, especially if it can't be recycled, due to the environmental damage it can cause. Ok, let's now move on to look at the costs and benefits of ensuring quality, by first looking at the benefits. One of the big benefits is that it gives a business a positive reputation for high quality products amongst the general public. This is really useful because this not only attracts customers to the business's products, which increases revenue, but also helps to keep them loyal as well, which generates repeat sales. In fact, creating high quality products can also create customers who are so loyal that they become advocates for their business, in the sense that they leave positive reviews on websites and tell friends and family how good an organisation's products are, which of course increases sales further. Further still, and due to all this, ensuring quality usually allows a business to sell its products at a higher price, which customers are willing to pay because the item gives them such high levels of satisfaction. In fact, if a business can sell its products at a big premium, it may find that although making quality products is more expensive, that a big profit can still be generated. Another advantage of ensuring high quality is that a business will receive fewer customer complaints as the products sold will be less likely to break or have a fault, which will also help a business's image and reputation. And of course, when you combine all these things together, what a business has is a product that is in high demand, meaning it is unlikely that it will be left with any unsold items that need to be discounted or worse, sent to landfill because they cannot be sold. However, as much as quality can attract customers, it also needs to be noted that it can also improve the productive process as well. This is because if a business is using the best inputs and checking quality at different stages during production, waste levels will be significantly reduced which saves costs. Better yet though, using the best machinery and training staff to use it will improve health and safety in the factory and result in fewer injuries. Ok, let's now turn to look at the costs of ensuring quality. Probably the biggest disadvantage is the cost of putting in place measures to ensure the quality of a product. For example, purchasing the best raw materials, using the most up-to-date modern machinery, training staff and undertaking quality checks is not cheap and will add to the cost of making a product. Further still, as this means a business may have to charge a higher price, it can result in fewer customers being able to afford its product, which could negatively affect sales and market share. Another problem with ensuring quality is that output levels and productivity may fall because so many checks are in place to make sure no errors occur during production. For example, if items are quality assured on a number of occasions throughout the productive process, this will take time and slow production down. And finally, ensuring quality puts a lot of pressure on a business because if an error with a product is missed when checked, it can negatively affect an organisation's reputation. For example, customers will post negative reviews on websites and social media if a fault is found in a business's product. Worse still, if the fault is found in a number of its products, a business may have to go to the expense of running a product recall so that the problem can be fixed and its reputation protected. Ok, so what did we learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we found out what a quality product is. Then we went on to investigate the methods used to ensure quality and then finally we explored the costs and benefits of ensuring quality. There is no doubt that there is room in the market for businesses that focus on making and selling quality products. However, to believe that quality in itself will sell a product would be a mistake. This is why so many organisations that offer quality products focus on the branding and image of their product as well as a way of creating and maintaining customer interest.